really my business plan in the beginning, it was four words. It was make something people want. And I just viewed myself as a demographic, right? As, as, a, as a donor, not as a homeowner, but like as a donor. Um, what would I want, you know, as a mid third, as a mid 20 something that likes technology, that liked innovation, um, with a little skeptical about uh, traditional charities, like what would I want? And then, you know, try your best with a limited budget to create a version of that. And that's how, that's how we got started. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Right now, I can talk to other founders. I can talk to other executives. Of course, I can learn from them, right? Or if I'm listening to a podcast, you know, of course, I can learn from them. But I'm thinking through, well, they're talking about customer acquisition, or then I'm like, well, that's what we're going through, right? Because we're actually doing it. And, you know, even before starting News Story, um, which I, I started at a, a relatively young age, 25, um, I started a for-profit startup right before this. Um, and that ended up failing, right? But that ended up, it forced me to, and not everybody listening, you don't have to, you know, start your own startup right out of college, right? I think that's it's for its own place. But what that did was it, it forced me to figure out how do I prepare for big meetings that I actually would never be in unless I started this, right? How do I put together a marketing plan that I would never be in if I didn't start this? Like, how would I sit across the table from this investor or this CEO that I never would have been, you know, whatever we're done? And that helped build, obviously I was very nervous and scared and imposter syndrome in the beginning and, you know, still even now, but like, man, that's how you build confidence, right? Is you you go out there, you be vulnerable, and that's how you start building confidence. Well, let's talk about coming out of that failure because yeah. many would see that failure as, oh, I'm just not capable. Why would I take on an even bigger mission and an even more audacious plan if I'm coming off of a failure? So what was the turning point for you and how are you able to dust yourself off and say, you know what, I'm going even bigger this next time? Yeah, I think when I when we started New Story, the initial vision was, I mean, I obviously wanted to uh, one day in my life make a make a big impact. You know, I didn't have a, an actual number or a clear vision. I think um, just getting started, I I wanted to I wanted to solve a problem in a different way from an entrepreneurial with an entrepreneurial lens, and and I think with the first startup, I tried to force it a little too much. Like I just. I just really wanted to do it. I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to like, and I forced the idea in hindsight. Um, now there was a ton of learnings that came from it. I wouldn't regret doing it because it led to basically starting New Story. Um, but with starting New Story, I I really saw like serious problems that that are um, and experiences that I felt should be better, right? And there's a um, there's a phrase from a program called White Commentary we went through, which was uh, really my business plan in the beginning. It was four words. It was make something people want. And I just viewed myself as a demographic, right? As, as, a, as a donor, not as a homeowner, but like as a donor. Um, what would I want, you know, as a mid-20 mid something that likes technology, that liked innovation, um, with a little skeptical about uh, traditional charities, like, what would I want? And then, you know, try your best with a limited budget to create a version of that. And that's how that's how we got started. Well, we're big on taking failure and gaining experience from it on the show. But also from that failure, you made some really key relationships that I think are often overlooked with putting effort and energy. And even if it doesn't succeed, Yes, it's great to have lessons. It's great to have that experience being in the room, but those relationships really paid off for you not only getting into Y Combinator, but getting experience with other people doing innovative things with NGOs. Can you talk a little bit about those relationships you built with your first business and how that really helped propel you with your second? Yeah, so my, I mean, some of our venture capital investors for the first business ended up uh, being the, the the larger news story supporters in the beginning, you know, because they got to know me. Um, we actually ended up uh, actually giving back almost all the money 
that we raised. So that was a little different. Um, we didn't burn it all. Um, but still, it was it, on paper. It definitely wasn't a success. Uh, so that was that was key. Just like starting to build those relationships, um, it gave me more confidence as somebody that was in my early twenties. Of how do you actually go in a room and talk to an investor and talk to an venture capitalist and talk about the future and try to convince them to to give you money to do it? Like that's that's not easy. Um, but I was able to do that really young, and that of course built built confidence in me. Where now I actually think. That's where I feel most confident, and that's where I feel I'm at my sweet spot um, is being being in those kind of rooms. Um, you know, the next thing it did was it, yeah, it introduced me to um, uh, another organization that has really inspired new story um, called Charity Water. I'm not sure if you guys know no Charity Water, but um, that was the other charity that we actually partnered with for our, for the first startup. Um, so there was two charities. One was in New York, which is Charity Water, and one was in Haiti. And uh, and I got exposed to um, to meeting their founder, Scott Harrison, who's now a mentor and advisor. His wife, Vic, um, who was also a co-founder of Charity Water, is on New Story's formal board of directors. Um, and that's, you know, I would have, I, I was so inspired by them and so inspired by their model that, that of course, like really influenced um, New Story's DNA in the beginning as well. So those are just a couple examples. And, you know, I, and then when I, when I decided to um, take another risk in starting New Story, a lot of the way that I, I guess one of the reasons someone asked, well, one just failed, why would you start this next thing? And I think what I experienced was, and what I felt was that when you're doing something that is actually uh, different or a kind of against the status quo, um, that attracts a certain kind of person that you can build relationships with, right? If, um, and I don't, uh, sometimes this comes off the wrong way, right? If I was, because there are some people that will do a job, whether it's being, um, you know, a lawyer or something else where like, they love it. They're passionate about it. They want to be the freaking best lawyer in the world. It's like, that's amazing, right? And like, that's awesome. And they should 100% be doing that. But then there's other people that just take a normal job because they think it's going to, you know, look good on LinkedIn and pay a decent salary. And it's like, that's, that's, doesn't, that's very ordinary, right? It's very ordinary to choose that path. Um, and you kind of blend in with everybody else. And then it's like, well, why would people doing or trying extraordinary things really want to build relationships when you've basically chosen to take a much safer, more uh, ordinary path, um, unless you really want to be doing that, right? That's different. Like, again, if you really want, if you want to be an amazing consultant or an amazing accountant, like you should, and you should do that if you really, if you really are passionate about it. But I think way too many people, especially in their twenties and even their thirties are just doing normal jobs and that pay well, and they're not very passionate about it. And you don't get to meet that many interesting people when you're doing that from my perspective. So I don't know, I got exposed to um, at a young age, like by doing something different, seeing how many doors that opened up and that became very interesting. Um, so yeah. We drop great content each and every week and we wanna make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. There's some I want to drill in to here. And this is something I've been discussing uh, a lot on the show and in our live streams on Facebook, which is having multiple missions. I mean, it could because it, let's just say that you do have a straight job and you dig yeah. it and you're happy with that. That's totally. fantastic. Fantastic. Perhaps to have some reach in a hobby, right? And, or, or an, an extra curric a curricular mission. This is my hobby mission, my creative mission, or the charitable or professional mission that I'm going on outside of my straight job uh, to see if I can make this work. When you have that reach and you don't know how to do things, you're left with finding out, you're left with asking other people. You, those connections will start building and this is where the doors you didn't even know existed started to appear. And there's many different missions. You could even have a romantic mission in your life. It's like of, of finding the wife and the, and the children and creating 
the, that family and what does that look like? And if you put that on paper beforehand, now you have something to strive for. I myself have multiple missions in my life, the art of charm being the main driver, the, the one that I've built a career around, but I also have, I'm also a creative, I play in bands and I have uh, uh, creative missions as well. I've just moved to a new town here, a uh, well, new city here in Vegas from Los Angeles. And having that mission has allowed me to, to quickly start building a social circle here in a new city because I've been loud about it and, and not as uh, shy about it, but speaking to people about this is what I'm doing here. And doors amazingly started opening up. And the people that I've been meeting in Vegas, is, is, is it's been because of being uh, unabashed about what that mission is and, ma and making it happen. I love that, man. And the thing I'll add to that, which is pretty much what you're saying, is um, I, I think in when you have that mission or you're, you're passionate about something, like be shameless in uh, asking for help or asking for mentorship or advice or like like bringing people into it you know and uh i i think sometimes that especially younger folks can be can be way too hesitant to ask people for help or to try to build relationships with somebody that they can genuinely you know learn from and and i know that's a hard skill some people it's not they're not wired to to to, to try to go out and build relationships but Whew, man, that, there's not many things that will that will bring a greater return for your mission than uh, proactively build, building relationships. And I think being um, there was a quote when we were at White Combinator from uh, the uh, the founder of Airbnb, and um, they were saying he was saying how he is, uh, especially as a young entrepreneur, he said, "I am shameless and asking for help." He's like, so many people think, you know, you have to show you can figure it out and you want to be very calculated when you ask for help. He's like, I literally would ask like the best investors, the best CEOs, the best founders for help. Of course, they're not all going to say yes, but he's like, I'm asking. And I think way too many people are are slow or hesitant to to ask for help. And all it takes is one yes. It takes one person volunteering to put the wind behind your sails.